Today's video is brought to you by Canadian jewelry and accessory company, Clocks and Colors. Personally, for the longest time, I neglected the accessory category of personal styling. Growing up, I didn't have a lot of people around me that wore jewelry, were big on jewelry, and I myself didn't wear too much jewelry. I never had my ears pierced, nothing like that. And it's only recently that I've understood the gravity of having accessories to complement an outfit, especially when it comes to telling a story about yourself that doesn't take words to say. Moreover, one of the more interesting accessories that I've been looking into more more and more over the last probably two to three weeks has been balaclavas and jewelry. We're gonna talk about them in tandem today. And if you don't know about the balaclava, I feel like in the last two, three years, it has burst onto the scenes as an alternative headwear item accessory. It isn't getting talked about as much as it should be here on YouTube. And obviously when it comes to jewelry, there's bracelets, charms, rings, necklaces, etc., etc. We're gonna talk about it all. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do. Let's talk balaclavas and jewelry. So the balaclava is a particular type of headpiece or headgear or hat that covers the face and chin and oftentimes can cover the mouth and nose as well, depending on the type of balaclava that you own. So the history of the balaclava or some historians call it the balaclava helmet actually originates from Polish or Prussian, which is German origin. The naming of the headgear balaclava actually comes from the Battle of Balaclava, which was during the Crimean War in 1850. 54, when British soldiers were sent this particular type of headgear to stay warm for the winter time. Fast forward to now and there are a few reasons why the balaclava has been thrown back into the fray of relevancy in 2021 now going into 2022. First and most obvious reason in my opinion has to be due to the global pandemic. I think the pandemic with face coverings fashion people wanted to be able to cover their face but also have a more stylish look to what they're doing and i think face coverings balaclavas masks things of those vein allow personal styling to still flourish while having a high level of functionality against fighting against the virus i think also in 2019 2020 and now in 2021 ski culture and just outdoorism hiker core gorp core a lot of people call it has really grown in prominence and as a result one of the main accessories or one of not maybe not the main accessories but one of the accessories that's a part of this sect of fashion is ski gear and i think the balaclava has been something in the past used by a lot of skiers or a lot of people in very cold regions and now that this style has once again grown into prominence the balaclava is now it's it's in its moment it's it's time to shine essentially <laughs> another reason has to be because of the particular people who are wearing masks face color face coverings and balaclavas You've seen it for a long time, different rappers, different entertainers have worn masks. Even, you know, on my personal Instagram, one of the first people I saw wearing masks was uh, this dude named Creative Cloth or Gregory uh, Cooper, I think is his last name, I believe. But Creative Cloth does a fantastic job of styling or he did style face mask. And he's just one example. You can look at Kanye, you can look at Cardi, you can look at other rappers, and entertainers. Like I said, the balaclava is something that I feel like has just grown and steadily kind of gain popularity over the years and i think now a lot of people are just more bold and are willing to actually try it out and wear it i know sometimes it has a negative connotation but i think that certain people wearing it gives it this positive connotation and gives it a more stylistic look speaking of stylistic look let's talk about potential ways you can actually style a balaclava if you decide to pick one up i'll also mention some places you can get them let's get into it so like i said the more traditional ways that you see balaclava styled in a more kind of casual and very accepted way is typically in ski culture people wear ski masks all the time and that's kind of akin to a balaclava where your face and your mouth and, and your lips are covered i think it's most appropriate during the winter time obviously if you walk around during the summertime people might look at you a little bit sideways depending on where you are in the world and how things work where you are but i think during the winter time a lot of people understand when it's cold outside maybe you want to spice up your particular headwear you don't just want to wear a beanie or a cap you want to wear something that has a little bit more personality or a little bit more flavor to it I think a balaclava is a great option. I'll put a couple options on the screen that I've seen that I feel like are very, very interesting in my opinion. There's 
just infinite ways to style it. I think one of the easiest ways I can talk about it is replace just whatever your headgear that you would wear typically for the winter time, whether it be you have a lot of layers on on your body and then you have a nice pair of trousers on or sneakers or boots or whatever. You throw a balaclava on, you throw a hood over top of that, and I think that's a great way to style it. Personally, for me, why I've been interested in the balaclava is because of two things. Obviously, the first one being the style portion of it. Like, I think it's a really interesting style piece. Well, I guess maybe three things. The style portion of it, the incognito-ness of it. So if you have a balaclava on, sometimes it allows you to, if you throw sunglasses over the top of them, like you're very like, who is that guy? Maybe you draw a little bit of attention to yourself, but sometimes I like being incognito mode. And then obviously it doubles as some kind of face covering because there are still like restrictions and different things and mask regulations that you have to abide by, at least here where I live. So that is another reason. And while balaclavas have shown a little bit more prominence in the last few years, I really haven't seen it on my personal Instagram feed where a lot of people are wearing balaclavas. Some people commented that they see it a lot in New York. Well, I don't live in New York and obviously Colorado is not a fashion hub. So there aren't a lot of people around here wearing it, but I'm really interested in trying it out. I have one coming in, so I'm excited to show you guys where I got it from. Let's talk about where you can get your own balaclava if you're interested. So one of the coolest parts about balaclavas is that they're actually being made by a lot of small creators as well as large companies so there's a plethora of options for someone who wants to dip their toe into this headgear one of the more interesting places i was able to find really cool balaclavas that were hand knit were on etsy you can check there obviously you can check on depop and all the other resale sites buying it secondhand or buying it from a small creator obviously goes and boasts well for that creator and creates a little bit more impact on their life than probably a large company um, but if you want to go the large company route, there's a couple that I saw. One from Common Sweden, which I think is a really cool one. I think it's made out of wool. There's a brown version and maybe a blue version if, I, if I'm right. Maybe not, but I think Common Sweden has some good ones. Another option is a Verloop balaclava. I'll put it on the screen right now. I thought this one had really good color blocking. Like I said, you can find them pretty much all over the internet. Just go into your search engine and look up balaclava. There are some that are like super unique that have like different design details like ears or horns or whatever. If you're into that, that might be more your speed. Personally, I always keep it pretty simple when it comes to my personal styling. So I go with the simple route and I would go with the simple route. So yeah, just give, give Google a search and you should be able to find a few balaclavas and Etsy and all those kind of things are a good place to start as well. Now let's talk about jewelry for a moment. The balaclava is a pretty special type of accessory, but I think more people are willing to buy into jewelry and other accessories like sunglasses than they are maybe something like a balaclava. So let's get into that. At the beginning of this video, I pointed out that I didn't really wear too much jewelry. I never had my ears pierced. I maybe wore a few necklaces or one bracelet over the course of my life for, for an extended period of time. In fact, probably where I began wearing bracelets and bracelets are something that at least I'm more inclined to wear was like silly bands. Do you guys remember silly bands? I used to wear like silly bands when I was like in middle school, very, very young. And then I used to wear this bracelet that had like sand in it. It was like, there were like a black and a white dot and they had like sand in them. And I used to wear those pretty often. But nowadays I've kind of, as of recently, I have started to find it to be a little bit more interesting. Um, I picked up the Ore friendship bracelet and that bracelet was one of the first items that I've been wearing consistently from a jewelry standpoint. I'm not huge on it, but it was one of the first items I started to wear consistently that was, you know, a good stainless steel item and piece that I wear consistently and adds to the outfits. And after wearing that, I, could, I saw how, you know, a lot of people mentioned it. A lot of people saw it as something that they appreciated or they noticed about what I was wearing. And I was like, oh. You know, jewelry can actually uplift and push an outfit to a new kind of level or new genre other than just not wearing it at all. So I think it's something that for a lot of people who are curious about it, there's a lot of options. So for both menswear and women's wear, there seems to be two types of people who wear and use jewelry as accessories for their outfits. The first is someone who uses jewelry as kind of like a focal point to their outfit. And what do I mean by that? It means that a lot of times their jewelry is showcased or their jewelry is really not necessarily loud, but it is something that's very prominent about their outfit, right? Like it's not something, it's not an afterthought. It's not something that they wear maybe every day and kind of forget about it. It becomes almost like a centerpiece for what brings the outfit all together, right? I think a great example of this, and I've probably shown it already, which is 
Fuego Joel. Joel is someone I've talked to maybe one or two times through DM. He seems like a really cool cat, um, but he has a lot of, a lot of chrome arts. So does someone like Kyron or Debao. They wear a lot of chrome arts items. And I think that style of jewelry, when you wear it, it really uh, elevates and just brings a level of like, like lure and luster to the outfit that if you didn't have that jewelry, if that wasn't a part of your character, your personality and styling, it would just have a totally different feel to it. And so for me, as I've been going through with my journey with jewelry and accessories, I think there's a couple things that I found to be pretty obvious. The first being the quality of materials. Obviously for a lot of things, the best quality is gonna be like sterling silver, you have stainless steel, then you have gold, you also have you know platinum and diamond jewelry encrusted all those kind of things that are part of the jewelry and then you have the details how is it made is it handmade is it machine pressed or all the different variables that go into making jewelry that once again just like clothing like quality matters and attention to detail matters in terms of quality products and so recently i've been able to acquire two new accessories through today's sponsor clocks and colors and i want to make this a very kind of pickup style integration for this part of the video i want to show you guys what i picked out and what kind of jewelry i'm into and what i'm looking at when i'm buying jewelry nowadays and thank you and shout out to clocks and colors for helping me you know bring this video to life and also dip my toe once again into more types of fashion accessories and jewelry so i'm pretty skeptical when it comes to working with particular brands because i want to give you guys and show you guys products that i actually believe in so i did my homework on clocks and colors and i was really blown away by one their craftsmanship the quality of materials used in their jewelry and just the overall presentation of the brand they stay on image all of their images are like on their instagram are black and white all their product images are black and white they really stay true to this like rugged american western styled theme that they have going for their brand and they live by it and i really love that let's start with the first item that i picked up which is the kyoto bracelet the unboxing experience as you can see is really nice everything feels really flush really put together like i'm unboxing a new iphone or something like that which i love and obviously jewelry you want to have a nice clean unboxing experience and nice presentation wow so my first impression of this bracelet was the fact that how heavy it was it was a really nicely crafted sterling silver which is unbelievable the bracelet honors a few parts of japanese culture and i find that so interesting i'm kind of in love or immersed with japanese culture i feel like all the time and i find this bracelet to be just so interesting the first thing being the geisha which is one of the most recognizable cultural figures in Japan, known as kind of a performing artist and an entertainer within the cultural cityscape. According to the description of the bracelet on the website of Clocks and Colors, there are only about 100 geisha that are actually still active today in Kyoto. Geisha actually meaning art doer within kanji. I also love the cherry blossom details all throughout the bracelet with the geisha. The cherry blossom is another one of those iconic cultural symbols of Japan and something that's very recognizable by the country. As someone who's a foreigner, it's something that I, you know, when I think about cherry blossoms, I think about Japan. <laughs> I also like how the bracelet pays homage to Japan or one of Japan's more culturally important cities, Kyoto, which is really, really cool. I think the description of this bracelet and the meaning behind it sold me on why it was something that spoke to me. And I can't wait to style this and wear this throughout the winter, summer, spring season. This is gonna be on my wrist pretty much all the time. With the Ore bracelet, I absolutely love this. Next, let's look at the second item I picked up from Clocks and Colors. And these are the Wanderer stainless steel sunglasses. They kind of give me that rugged Western kind of tough guy vibe for sure. And I absolutely love these from onset. When I saw these, they were something that I had to have. Yo, yo, these sunglasses. I'm a new man in these sunglasses, man. You can't talk to me the same way. <laughs> these are made up of stainless steel frame. They feel really good. They made me look really good. And I really enjoy these. I'm impressed by both the details and the quality from Clocks and Colors. They did hook your boy up with a code to give you guys, if you're interested, use code DrewJoiner20 at checkout, all caps, and then 20 at the end of it, or click the link in the description. Check out what they have. They have rings, obviously, some of the things that 
go hand in hand with accessories is having and wearing rings. They have pendants, they have chains, they have a lot of different selection. And like I said, I feel like their aesthetic for a lot of people matches with another brand mentioned earlier in this video. And I think that they do it at a relatively lower price point and they still give you that quality. So check out Clocks and Colors. Shout out to them for actually reaching out because I'm glad I could actually dip my toe, have jewelry and wear jewelry, and I'm gonna be wearing and using it a lot more than I would before, particularly. And so shout out to them for that. And I can give you guys a little bit of an inside scoop on a brand that maybe you don't know about. They're pretty, they're pretty well known. They do a pretty good job. They're pretty big. So they deserve their flowers as well. They're a really great brand. I think for me, when it comes to styling, jewelry, balaclavas, sunglasses, or any other type of accessory, I think I'm going to start simple and work my way out. I personally prefer things of a higher quality grade. And so acquiring different pieces from different companies is going to take me a long time. If clocks and colors continues to, to bless me like they did in this video obviously i'll have more things to showcase for you guys and i think what clocks and colors does that a lot of brands don't do um is they really stay true to that core concept concept of you know being someone being a man who's able to wear jewelry a lot of people think of that as a taboo which is ridiculous um clock and colors makes it and, and it, it feels like a very cool thing and a lot of people obviously know wearing jewelry is something that's super dope so checking out places like clocks and colors or going the vintage second hand route is something that's an option whether it be for rings, for chains, for pennants, for sunglasses, I think Clocks and Colors has you covered for sure. They're a retailer that I trust. I still have to figure out you know, what else there is out there, but I think they are someone who's really, really good. And then like I said, you can go the vintage route, you can find chains, bracelets, rings secondhand. I know I've talked to a couple of friends of mine who've been able to find things secondhand and that's also really great, but maybe the quality isn't there like it is for Clocks and Colors. So all these things are just something to keep in mind. We'll be styling these on my personal Instagram and I rarely ask you guys to give me a follow there, but if you wanna see the progression, my journey wearing jewelry, especially with brands like Clocks and Colors and just balaclavas and all these kind of personal styling elements you can give me a follow there at drew joiner underscore let me know what you think about jewelry down in the comment section do you wear jewelry what do you wear do you wear rings do you wear necklaces do you wear bracelets do you wear whatever do you wear balaclavas talk to me down in the comment section i'm really curious to hear what you guys thought about the video the overall vibe of it one last thank you to clocks and colors everything is down in the description and as always i'm spreading peace love and positivity in 2021 so that means i'm spreading peace love and positivity to you wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day i'll see you next time abianto peace what is good post vivid man how y'all doing today y'all happy y'all having a good day like what's what's up with you what's the vibes you know the vibes yk tv what's up <laughs> let me get a fist bump in one time you feel me bop Thank you guys for staying to the end of the video. The 1%, the 0.001% that stay all the way to the end. I appreciate you so immensely. You have no, no idea. I'm gonna ask this question for the PVV, for the post vivid. Do you guys wear jewelry? I know for some dudes and for some ladies, they don't wear really wear a lot of jewelry. I feel like for women, it's a lot more common for them to wear jewelry. For guys, only particular dudes wear a ton of jewelry, especially rings. I feel like bracelets and necklaces, a lot more people wear those two things, but like rings and... Now I'm having their ears pierced. I feel like it's a it's, ear, ears pierced is pretty common. It's pretty common, especially in, you know, I feel like the black community is pretty common. Um, but what, what are your thoughts? Do you wear jewelry? Last question, random question. What is your favorite dessert? For me, I'm gonna have to go with the tres leches cake. It's like a Latin American, Mexican, Nicaraguan style cake that has like milk poured over the top of it and it's like soft and it's just bomb. I love me some tres leches. It's been like my favorite dessert as of recently, tres leches. What's your favorite? Let me know. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.